Hello there, it's Tanya Gabrielle, Wealth Astrumerologist, and welcome to Star Codes. This is the forecast where we look at an important event coming up so we can navigate it with more insights about self-growth and uplifting the energy so that we use it for our highest good. And in this case, it's going to be the very powerful Aquarius full supermoon. On August 11th and 12th, it's actually August 12th Universal Time in Greenwich, England, but August 11th in the Americas. The time of this supermoon is 2.36 a.m. Universal Time, and that would be 9.36 p.m. Eastern Time, New York, and 6.36 p.m. Pacific Time, LA. Now, why is this such an important full moon? It's because it brings together Aquarius, the ruler of Aquarius, Uranus, and Saturn, which is currently in Aquarius. So the big square of the year, which is activated one more time in early October, is being triggered by virtue of Uranus ruling this full moon and Saturn being in Aquarius. So this big square of 2022, which comes together in early October, between like end of September until around October 5th, it's exact around the 1st of October. This big square involves Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, and Saturn, which is in Aquarius. So it's being triggered in this full moon. And not only that, this full moon has a T-square between Uranus which is merged with Mars in Taurus. And if you know, we have this stellium in late July, early August, that is between Uranus, Mars, and the North Node. So Uranus and Mars are conjunct. They're forming a square to the Moon and Saturn in Aquarius, and another square on the other side to the sun in Leo. So they form this triangle called a T-square and you can see it right here. The red lines, you see the opposition between the sun and moon and then next to the moon is Saturn and then they both create a square to Uranus and Mars. So it's a really big deal and basically what we're dealing with in the overall scheme of things is leaving the past behind. So basically Saturn represents the past and Aquarius and Uranus the future. And since we just had that big stellium with the North Node, Uranus and Mars on July 31st, August 1st, this is all about moving forward now. We're really, the momentum into the shift that has been ongoing is really picking up now until the end of the year and even into 2023. So hold on to your seats because we are accelerating now and what is helping that newfound energy, that forward momentum energy is that this new moon is happening at 19 degrees Aquarius for the moon, 19 degrees Leo for the sun, and 19 is a number made up of one and nine, beginnings and endings, really showing that there is a shift in play. Not only that, one plus nine equals 10, one plus zero for 10 equals one, so 19 is a one in terms of the root number, and one is new beginnings. One is shifting into a new period. So, We've got that. We've got the Prince of Heaven number 19 and the Prince of Heaven number 19 is the sun. That's what the ancients called the sun. And then we also have six planets in fixed signs. So the fixed signs are Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio, and Leo. And the moon and Saturn are in Aquarius. Uranus and Mars are in Taurus. Venus and the sun are in Leo. So that really puts a heavy emphasis on fixed signs and the fixed signs are definitely about holding on to things. There's a lot of unwillingness to change in general, but 
at the same time, the plus side is a lot of determination and a fantastic focus to accomplish things, to getting things done. So the energy is fixed and not flexible. And then here come Uranus and Aquarius, which are really the purveyors of change and sudden shifts and the unexpected coming in and rattling the cage, basically saying that, okay, well, we know you like things to not, you know, change and stay the same, but we are now creating rapid transformation. And it's all about building something of value, building something new of value. Saturn is the builder. Taurus is a sign that likes to create something that is of great value. And that's where Uranus is. Saturn is an Aquarius. And so Aquarius governs communities. So creating new breakthroughs, practical breakthroughs that result in building those new communities. And then there's also the fact that we have Saturn representing the past, Uranus representing the future, Saturn representing efficiency and restriction and work and leadership, and then Uranus, the unexpected genius, freedom, breakthroughs. So a lot of things that we took for granted will be up in the air. And so we have to just keep staying comfortable with change. And I know that may sound like a paradox because change isn't always comfortable, but if you can get comfortable with all the transformation and the need to be incredibly flexible now and very open and very tuned in to the divine, to source, to your guides, because that's how, that's really your only way to navigate all these shifts. Your navigation system will always be there for you and you can trust it implicitly. And that's really one of the major gifts of these times of change is that we have only that to rely on. So basically this is shake up energy. There is really very little that you can depend on except for that inner navigation system, your inner voice. And also that Saturn is part of this equation, being in Aquarius, being conjunct the moon, merged with the moon for this full moon, being square to Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, and Saturn rules Capricorn. And Pluto is still in Capricorn. It's the last couple of years Pluto is, is moving through Capricorn and Pluto is the planet of life, death, rebirth, empowerment through change planet. Pluto also governs power and Saturn governs career. Saturn governs the old structures, right? The, the structures that we come to rely upon. So you can see how there's just so much being impacted here. And so Saturn is one of those planets that also governs leaders because leaders of empires or leaders of countries, leaders of corporations or any leaders in any capacity come from a historical perspective that uh, gives them that power and that it that history is the past so leaders will be very much impacted by these rapid changes and any past ways of accomplishing their goals or their agendas that do not support this shift those will not gain any more momentum in fact the momentum will stagnate uh, there just won't be the implicit trust in the same old, same old ways. And that is a good thing because change cannot take root when we are still holding on tightly to ways that seem familiar and actually have no place at this time of the major shift. And if there's any sign that represents a shift, it is Aquarius because Aquarius is designed to find inventive solutions. Aquarius is the sign that looks to the future for inspiration, that creates inventions and that looks at long range goals. So it's a good time for you to look at the vision you have for your life. Not, and it's, it's really just to focus on the frequency in your vision. It's not to focus on the exact end point of how you want that to look, but more the big picture 
of the outcomes that have that elicit a sense of abundance and joy and peace and acceptance and pleasure and inner peace in you so there is really this sense of the inspiration that comes from Aquarius the higher mind aspect the innovation the eccentricity and brilliance meaning you're going out on a limb because it hasn't been experienced before so you really have to have a a large level of trust at this point there's excitement there's surprise with Aquarius and the reason it's there is it yields those unexpected results that wouldn't have otherwise even been contemplated or let alone accepted and allowed so the element of surprise um, shifts things up and creates a an interruption in a sense to what the norm is so the norm isn't just you know going as usual so again this is all happening this t-square this full moon is all happening in fixed signs so some of the changes may feel uncomfortable if you're not open to the rapidness of this time right now so the shadow side then is that you are inflexible that you have a fear of engaging with the present moment because it means that you're ch you're changing and that of course is life right engaging with the present moment means you're not caught in the past so another shadow side of the aquarian theme is not getting involved hands off right um, being aloof so just watch those tendencies during this time now the moon conjunct saturn the moon in aquarius conjunct saturn in aquarius means that you're going to take your intuition your feelings more seriously you're going to take responsibility for your well-being you have more self-control and you have a sense of duty that you just it just comes more naturally to just go and accomplish and be there for whatever it is that you signed up for uh, emotional commitment is also magnified and your feelings are understood at a level that brings a lot of clarity now the sun is opposite Saturn when the moon is conjunct Saturn in a full moon because the sun is opposite the moon Sun and Leo so when the sun is opposite Saturn there's a sense of feeling more restricted and you want to dissipate any tendency to procrastinate and not get up and get things done to and, and do that by just focusing on getting after like getting physical exercise remember that Mars is part of this t-square Mars conjunct Uranus and Taurus Mars really wants you to move and not wait for others to inspire you or praise you but really get active and sow those seeds and then you can see they will return to you exponentially so the moon is square to Uranus and that definitely can create excitability in terms of your emotions so you want to guard against impulsive actions or reactions you know those instant reactions that are sort of knee-jerk and just know that yes you are yearning for freedom freedom is is one of the key words here with Aquarius in general and just understand that things are moving quickly so the air is cleared rapidly and you don't necessarily have to contribute to the drama by reacting and just allow it to evolve uh, so if you feel any kind of disruption that comes from Uranus it is it is there to elevate your inspiration it's there to really allow you to go deeper in terms of your profound abilities as an intuitive to connect with source and your guides not not feel like you're being somehow you know attacked in some way Taurus also governs what you value so Uranus is really in a sense changing that up a little bit for us in general while Uranus is moving through Taurus for many years 2018 till around 2026 or so and so that's that's been in play for a while but now it's really being triggered by this square with Saturn last year and this year and it's coming to a head again now so we want to look at what it is we value and are there things we 
can let go of? Are there beliefs we can release? So it's really to be flexible in general to, and adjust to change in a big way and just uh, not to make those aggressive reactions in a sense. Now, one more thing, the moon is sextile to Chiron and that is so beautiful during this full moon because it means that love, the great healer, is coming through with great compassion and allowing your heart to be very tender, very sensitive. And the more you love, the more you are healed and you will really feel that during this full moon. So the healing is really enhanced at this time with the increased tenderness that allows you to feel the energy of others, feel the vibration of people around you very deeply and allow it to move you in a very positive healing way. So wonderful in terms of the activation of deep compassion. And remember that Aquarius is a sign that governs the collective in general. So the collective meaning we are all moving through this shift together and then of course we also have our individual way of adjusting that is unique to us and Aquarius governs both of those uh, the water bearer is a water bearer of wisdom and the water bearer of the future and pouring new creative ways of living our future and and creating a flow as well the water bearer is very much seeding the potentials and the ideas that then go into the river and start flowing. And that river is a wonderful theme in general because you don't want to fight the flow of the river now. If you feel this quickening, which is part of this time we're in, remember that you are discovering a new path and that everything will feel a little bit more destined now because it is almost like you can't resist it. It's irresistible. It's just the river, you're in it, you're flowing, and you can't swim upstream, right? So this is a very important vision to have in your mind is, is that ease of flow that you have even when you're born and you come through the birth canal and that flow of being born is water-based. So again, this is a time to just understand if you're going through a challenge, you know, being born obviously is a major challenge and shift and we all go through challenges, but we don't have to linger in the suffering of that moment. It's the lingering that results in the pain. So if we keep turning back, we are regurgitating past experiences and that means we can't be inspired because we're not in the present. We're not in the flow. We're not looking at where we are right now and where we're heading and seeing beyond the past, literally allowing us to release the path past with every breath, every out breath, it's gone. So everything shows you how you are expressing or suppressing energy and that energy is your divine light. So pay attention to that because you're either expressing that divine light or you're suppressing it. And once you see how any challenge that is happening in your life is actually serving you, supporting you, elevating you, you move out of that suffering and into living fully. So that is really part of the empowerment of this T-square with Mars involved as well. Mars in Taurus conjunct Uranus is setting you free to feel only inner confidence and no inner fear. Both Mars and Uranus are fearless planets and they're the apex of this triangle, as you can see, with the North Node, which, it, which basically means the North Node point, points north, that's our future. The future is to feel empowered and fearless. So leaving behind fear, not being the victim. That's really the key. So going into your heart center will allow you to do that because everything that you experience then will see be seen as, as being of service to you. And that lifts you then out of any heaviness you feel, any suffering you feel, any pain that you feel as we move through this birth canal into this new life, you know, being born now. So just have that, that feeling of connecting to that inner confidence within you. you. You have it naturally. It's basically your attunement to the divine. 
right? That gives you the trust and the confidence to move through anything. So have a beautiful Aquarius full moon. And speaking of confidence, what will help you a lot with your confidence is to know your actual star code. And I have a free masterclass for you where all you need to know is your birthday, your birth certificate name, and if you have it, your birth time and birthplace for the astrology part of the masterclass. And you can discover your divine blueprint in that free masterclass. And it will tell you so much about who you are at soul level and help you understand others as well, which is always a big plus. So we're not in judgment of others. So have fun with that free masterclass at starcodeclass.com. Discover your own star code, your destiny, your life purpose. There's so much to see and to be excited about and confidence building as well. So enjoy that and have a beautiful Aquarius full moon. I will see you in next week's Star Codes podcast. Mm -hmm.